Welcome back folks to another project sponsored by PCB Way. Today we're going to continue on with our look at operational amplifiers and today we're just going to do something both useful and fun. We're going to look at a voltage controlled oscillator. Now to be quite honest with you, I didn't design this particular arrangement. This is um, actually from a reference design, I think either from TI or from National Semiconductor. Uh, but uh, I've modified a little bit for, for my purposes here, but it, it is a, a really interesting design and uh, we'll get back to explaining it uh, once we have a word from PCB Way. Okay, here we are over at PCB Way. What I'm going to do here is going into the quick order. Okay, so then I can just click on add my Gerber files. So you just choose a file where you've zipped up all your Gerber files and your drill file and you open it up. So here we are, it's, it's decided that we have a two layer board and it's got the dimensions correctly. Now all we have to do is choose our options. You have a lot of different options here. It's a two layer board, but if you were to go in and just get a quote and you wanted a quote on a four layer version of the board, you can click on that and it'll change the prices up here accordingly. You can choose your material, the thickness of the board. 1.6 is fine, but you could put in a thinner board or a thicker board, depending on what your needs are. And of course, the prices will be updated accordingly. Um, we'll stick with the 1.6. This is not a very complicated board, so we don't need very, very fine track spacing and track width, but you can have it even wider, or you can have much, much narrower. Minimum hole size, again, if you require very, very, very small hole sizes, you can select that too. Three millimeters, pretty much the standard. What color do you want your board? So you choose a, a solder mask here to make the board whatever color you want. Uh, so pretty well when you do it, it, it's clever enough to notice exactly what it is would work best for you. So you can make little changes here if you want, uh, such as surface finish. The, the standard is hot air solder leveling with lead-based solder. Immersion gold is not too expensive, and I've done boards in immersion gold too, where I wanted something that I don't want the, the board to tarnish. Um, via process, you want your, your vias tented, plugged, or not covered. And this is about the weight of the copper or the thickness of the copper on the board. And standard for most boards is one ounce copper. Now it's just a matter of choosing your shipping method. Choose whatever shipping method you want and then save it to the cart. Then it's just a simple matter of putting in your information and paying for it. PCB prototype, the easy way. It really is. Okay, we're back. Now, let's, let's have a look at how this, uh, this wonderful little oscillator works. It's, it's quite ingenious. Let's see what's happening. So if you look over here, we basically have an integrator, but an integrator with uh, a couple of little differences. And on this side here, we have a comparator. And uh, again, with a, with a difference, it, it has a hysteresis setup. And uh, the way this works is, let's say that uh, we're at a state where the, this operation amplifier is turned on. So what's going to happen here, this will be high. And because this is high, this resistor here will cause this input to be a little bit higher than the set point here, which is VCC by two. So this here will be just a little bit higher than VCC by two. And uh, at the same time, this transistor here will be turned on. So that'll draw this input here down. So this one here will be then one third of the control voltage. Whereas this input here will be at half the control voltage. So that's going to cause this operational amplifier to turn on and charge up this capacitor through here. And this will give us our, our ramp going up like this. Now, once this voltage gets above this voltage here, this op amp here will go low. And when it goes low, it turns this transistor off so that this point here goes to the control voltage, which is above one half the control voltage causing this amplifier here now it goes low down to ground. Uh, it's going to cause this capacitor to discharge and the voltage drops down. Let's look back over here again. Now when this uh, output is low here, that 100K resistor here draws this voltage on this down to less than one half of VCC divided by two. So then, then this will come down here and it'll reach this point here, at which point it's going to be lower than the trigger point here, which of course is going to cut this uh, up amp to turn back on again. And then the whole dance just keeps going. The voltage here is very stable. It will be offset from ground by approximately one half ECC running through it here. And uh, the lower limit, and the top limit will be set by the lower limit and the top limit of the trigger. 
and that would be set by this resistor network here and depending on whether the output is on and off. So we've got a very stable voltage here, we've got a very stable voltage here. The voltage here, of course, will be whatever the operation amplifier can supply given the supply voltage. So in this case, we're going to be using an LM358, so it'll be a couple of volts less than 12 volts peak to peak. Now what happens here is the control voltage is increased. Well, all that really does is just drives the output of this op amp harder. The more you increase that, the harder that drives. So the more rapidly it charges up through the capacitor, the more rapidly it discharges through the capacitors. Because of that, the time it takes to go from uh, the low trigger volts to high trigger voltage takes less. So the frequency increases. And we'll show you that when we get the boards in from PCB way and uh, build them up. And that will be the next episode. But this is just, this one here is just going to be a lot of fun. I'm not going to go into any of the theory of it. I'm not going to throw any equations at you, get you to do any math. Now, another thing I should point out is that uh, ideally, because we're using 100K here and 100K here, uh, all these 47K resistors should actually be 50K. But I don't have uh, 50K resistors. I don't even have 51K resistors. I need to get some of those. So I just put in 47K. So what we're going to see in the final product when I when I do put it together is we're not going to get perfect square wave. It's not going to be a 50% duty cycle. So, But if you did want a 50% duty cycle, you have to make sure that, uh, you know, this is R, this is R, this is one half R, one half R, one half R, and one half R. These ones here are not so important. These could be 10K, 5K, whatever. You're basically trying to find one half VCC here. And whatever way you do it, you can put a pot in. It doesn't really matter much if you change it. It'll just change the offset in that triangle wave. Basically, that's all that'll happen. This is where the triangle comes out. So we're, we're going to put that through a one UF capacitor to give her a triangle output. And we're going to put the output of this through the one UF capacitor and you get a square wave coming out. So let's have a quick look at the layout that I came up with here for it. Now, this is board right here. It's going to be a small little board, 62 millimeters by 47 millimeters. And I've laid everything out as logically as, as I can to have the control over this side and to give a couple of different ways to get it controlled in, whether it's through alligator clips by the, on these three things here. So you can go to a potentiometer or uh, directly from another device that's got a, a voltage that you want to use to control the, the oscillator. And here is our range control here, low and high. And they engage these two capacitors here, the 10 nanopower and 220PF. And this is our square wave output, our triangle output, and our power input over here. And what I did this time is I put the ground plane on the top. And as usual, I try to work out uh, a layout that would allow me to put all the traces on one side of the board. And what I did this time, which I didn't do last time, but I do most of the time, is I put in a copper pore for VCC. So that's actually a pretty complete copper pore. And it essentially is another voltage plane in this case. So this should be a nice little board. And of course, you know, doing that, putting the copper pore in means a whole lot less copper needs to be etched from the board and potentially uh, thrown out. All right. So that's all I have for you today. I've already ordered the board for PCB way as usual, and they'll be in in a week or two. And we'll come back then, put one or more of these together and just play around with it, have fun with it. I will tell you though, this circuit come in very handy. Back in the day when I was a young lad, I put a bunch of these together along with some digital to analog converters and was able to create quite a sophisticated uh, synthesizer for my APIC computer at the time. I had fun with the circuit back then. It's a, it's a great circuit and, and like I say, it's, it's pretty ingenious how it works. I wish I had come up with it. All right. Thanks, folks. We'll see you in the next uh, video, and we'll see you for sure when these boards come in. We build this up. Bye-bye now.